Hey everyone, this is Ryan with EscoTech, and I've got a Dell OEM GTX 1660 Super, and I wanted to take a look at this and see if it's a viable GPU for somebody in a pinch. I actually filmed this video a little earlier on in the current GPU shortage, and just wanted to take a look and see if it would be an option for decent performance in a in a bind. Um, you can tell that the card doesn't look like much. It's really just a very basic plastic shroud and a super cheap looking heatsink. It definitely isn't the most impressive or attractive card, and it actually kind of looks like a three-way love child of a current 3000 series Founders Edition card, a stock Intel heatsink, and a Tupperware container. Now, Gamers Nexus and a couple other channels have done a much more technical review on, on these cards and gone a lot more in depth. I just want to do a quick overview of whether or not this is something you can do. Some of these OEM GPUs from Dell and HP and those kind of system builders were reasonably priced early on in the graphics card shortage, but even these are tough to come by now. With that said, I'm going to do a quick comparison to this EVGA 1660 Super and see how this card holds up. So the first thing that you notice in looking at the difference between these two cards is the build quality of the EVGA is light years ahead of the Dell card. It has a metal backplate, a dual shroud with two fans, it's got a heat sink with some heat pipes in it, and in general is just a much better looking card. EVGA does happen to be one of my favorite add-in board card makers and they do a good job of making their cards look nice without being too gaudy. And so now I am going to run a couple benchmarks and we'll take a look at the difference between how the Dell OEM GTX 1660 Super does against the EVGA 1660 Super. And you might be a little surprised by these results. First, a quick look at my test system. I have a Core i7 9700 non-K CPU, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 266 megahertz, a 500 gigabyte Western Digital M.2 SSD, a gigabyte motherboard, and a 500 watt 80 plus gold PSU. To try to get as accurate results as possible, I ran each benchmark three times and then compared the average between the cards. Starting with Unigen Superposition, the EVGA had a 4.7% advantage. And this, as you'll see, kind of holds up throughout all the benchmarks that the EVGA is around 5% faster than the Dell card. Moving on to 3D Mark Time Spy, the EVGA scored 6,212, the Dell was at 5,911, and again you see a 5.1% advantage for the EVGA card. And finally I wanted to run one in-game benchmark, so I went to the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark where the EVGA got 88 FPS average and the Dell was at 83, which is again 6%, that's the biggest difference between the two cards that we've seen, but still pretty much in line with the 5% difference. And that's it for the benchmarks, but I wanted to mention that the thermals on the card, even though the Dell only has one fan, only ended up running about 4 degrees hotter. Both cards ran pretty cool and quiet. Um, I did not take sound readings from both. I should have grabbed my little sound meter and done it, but I didn't think of it at the time. Uh, neither was loud enough to hear outside the PC case if it was closed. One last thing that I do want to mention is that I could not close the gap by trying to overclock the Dell 1660 Super. I could get about halfway, gain about 2% or so, maybe 3 at the most, before the card would start crashing. So, as you would guess by looking at it, the card is a terrible overclocker. So, what does this all mean? Unsurprisingly, both cards were pretty close together, and that's because they do use the same chip from EVGA. Both have the exact same GPU at the heart of the chip on the board. Uh, they just build around that, and basically Dell just stops at the point of diminishing returns. And again, Gamers Nexus has mentioned the uh, VRAM on the Dell does run significantly hotter, but it's still within spec and not really going to change anything. It may just affect the overall lifespan of the card. Even with that, this card should last long enough and run just fine for the lifespan of a you would expect a GPU to run, which I would say is probably three to five years before it's time to upgrade or the card just flat out becomes obsolete. 
so that's it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments on whether or not you would actually use one of these cards in a pinch. I know the graphics market has changed, but a good deal on these, or you know, even if you were to happen to have one fall in your hands, uh, it's not the worst option. And again, with the graphics card market still what it is, it might get you by in a pinch till you can get something better. I know most gamers probably wouldn't be caught dead with a card that looks this cheap in their system, but right now, sometimes you just kind of have to do what you got to do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with my next video.